Hey guys. Um, Jeez. Welcome to this week's episode of Coffee Time with Cobra. Here's the coffee. I am Cobra. Let us begin. Mm. It has been one hell of a week for me. Uh, schooling has been going okay. A bit crazy. My therapist uh, thinks I need to slow down. I think I need to slow down, so I'm going to slow down, which means it frees up some time for me to get back to reading some really good books I've been reading uh, to give me food for thought. And I figured I'd do this video before I have to go shopping um, for the mid-morning or mid-afternoon rush um, because my therapist... Uh, the medication my therapist has me on, um, it's fundamentally rewiring my brain. Um, the way they, the way they described it was um, how a person with a traumatic experience, PTSD, things of that nature, their fight or flight system gets locked into some sort of loop hole in which they are reliving that trauma in that moment. Their brain cannot differentiate between the past and the present. And so I'm doing a form of mental exercises, um, various other things to try and shift that uh, locked up program, if you will, in my brain over so that um, I will uh, be a more sociable butterfly, as they say. Uh, I have also been busy working on my Mando helmet. I finally got the first layer of primer down on it. Um, so I'll, I'll be doing some update videos on that. Um, my electronics videos are on hold until I can get a reasonably good uh, hot air workstation and so, uh, it's it's basically a hot air rework gun and a soldering iron in a complete digital station where I can set the temperatures and stuff and whatnot. They won't keep popping fuses uh, like my current uh, one does. And so my electronics videos are on hold. They're not finished. They're not stopped. I will do more about those. The 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 the, the um. Uh, 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 I'm I'm calling it Project Spineless. I will be working on Project Spineless more. It's just for now, it's on hold. Uh, not indefinitely, it's just on hold until I can get uh, finances together to get me a hot air rework station. I have reached out to some other content creator friends of mine uh, to help me get my my creative juices percolating again. Uh, most notably, DDG. Thank you, dude. Uh, he's on holiday right now, but he said once he gets back from his holiday with his wife and his family and whatnot he will uh, uh, help me uh, make my content more um, friendly more more watchable more enjoyable things of that nature for you guys and that's all I care about is I want you guys to watch the content I want you to subscribe I want you to like uh, not for the dopamine hit or anything it's just you know I just want you guys to uh, enjoy what I do um, which is I like to entertain people that's that's my goal. I like to entertain people. That's why I do comedy stand-ups. Uh, everyone's like, what? Yes, I do 30-minute stand-up session things. Uh, there's a club here in town called The Purple Turtle. You can just Google it. It's in Reading. Um, they do an open mic night. Um, I use that as a form of therapy to help me get over. Not not necessarily stage fright. I'm not, I'm not afraid to be on stage or anything. Um, it's again more to help me get over my um issue of uh being around large groups of people um back in the day i used to be in a mess tent a chow tent with you know three four five hundred people thousand people you know on a forward operating base and and crammed in a barracks with you know 30 30 of my friends and whatnot now i can't even be around more than three people without my uh fight or flight adjectiveness kicking in and, 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 and it turning out to be uh, not 
a nice thing for other people around me. Uh, I tend to have no filter between thought and action. Uh, so if my brain says punch someone, my hand is already moving, if that makes sense, instead of the logic part of my brain saying, no, wait, that's a nice person, don't punch that thing. You know, it's just, I can't help it. Um, again, I'm, I am taking medication for it. I am seeking therapy for it and various other things. This is why I haven't been streaming a lot, guys. It's because my mental health has been taking a nosedive, like, serious, worse than that, that submarine that went to explore the Titanic. Um, so, yeah, there is that. I don't hide that fact. I talk about it on my live streams. I talk about it in my videos. Um, mental health uh, is very important to all of us not just men or women um which leads me into why i have been temporarily my account on twitter has been temporarily restricted for seven days i think um mostly because i refused to take down a tweet that says that there's only two genders which there is uh male female um and that um men cannot have periods because we can't i am a man i've never had a period in my 44 years of living i have never had a period not once have i bled from my non-existent vagina because i don't have a vagina i have a penis i have testicles and i have an anus that's all i have down there well i have a scrotum as well but the point is i have never bled from any of those areas on a regular basis you know, like once a month for five days. Men do not have periods. Trans men, i.e., and again, this is a loose term. A woman who transitions to be a man, but doesn't have the full gear downstairs sorted out, they still menstruate. Because they're still biologically a woman on the inside. They're still a woman. On the outside, they may try to give an out, outward appearance of being a man. Um, you may take hormones, but your body's still going to naturally produce estrogen, which is going to naturally want to cause your uh, uh, um, your ovaries to produce your your your. Which, if they don't get fertilized, they get flushed out of your body. Um, as a as a as a joke I used to call it, oh look, my sister's regenerating. That's a Doctor Who reference. Um And I'm sorry if what I'm saying upsets you or offends you. Okay, I am. I am incredibly sorry that you are hurt by facts and words, okay? I have family members who are trans who are gay, who are lesbian. I, myself, am bisexual, okay? Everyone keeps asking me about my sexuality. I am bisexual. I am attracted to both men and women, okay? So you can lump me in with that LGB part, which, by the way, I'm sorry, the word lesbian should not exist. Gay is gay. Gay does not reference just men. Gay references both men and women. Therefore, the fact that women demanded to just be called lesbian, okay, again, words are getting turned into salad, okay? You've got homosexuality, you've got lesbian, you've got gay. They all mean the same fucking thing, okay? They all mean the same thing, all right? It's just love, okay? It's just love. My daughter, bisexual, doesn't bother me. I don't talk much about my biological daughter, okay? Because if she wants me to talk about it, she would say, Dad, it's okay to talk about it. But where she wants her privacy, I will grant her and give her her privacy. But what you got to understand is one simple thing, okay? I love my daughter no matter what. If she was lesbian, I wouldn't love her any less. She literally saved my life. I'm not joking. My daughter saved my life. I made my best fucking friend. My daughter is my best friend. Whenever I'm down, I message her. She perks me up. Whenever she's down, she messages me. I perk her up. Okay? I made my best fucking friend. She gets me. I get her. We, we openly talk about things that parents and ch children... In, in 
sitcoms don't even talk about. She talks to me about, you know, her her anxieties and 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 you know where she wants to be in life and and everything else. And and I'm I'm doing the best I can to be the cheerleader that she wants me to be. You know, sometimes it's hard being a cheerleader and a person that has to poke her in the butt sometimes to help her move along down the path that she wants to go down. But that's, that's what being a parent is. But it doesn't mean I lo don't love my daughter as much as I should have if she was straight or gay or lesbian or trans or whatever. It has nothing to do with that. Okay, full disclosure. I had an aunt who was lesbian. I had an uncle who's transgender. I have an uncle who's gay. Christmas... I would sit at the dinner, Christmas dinner table with everyone. I'd be sitting next to my aunt, who's lesbian, sitting next to my uncle, who's trans, you know. And I'm just sitting there eating my Christmas dinner, having fun with them, talking to them, even asking. I even met my tra my, my, my trans uh, 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 uncle's partner, you know. He would sit at the dinner table, you know, we do. And we're Catholic. Do you understand? We don't believe in divorce. We don't believe in abortion. But what we believe in is love is love. Okay. I accept every single person for who you are. Do not under do not get this misconstrued. I accept you for you. Okay? I accept you for the content of your character, not the colour of your skin. I accept you for the content of your actions. Okay? not your causes to those actions so if you are in a parade screaming we're coming for your kids case in point don't be afraid when i put a gun to your forehead and pull the trigger and don't feel two ways about it because you come for my kids you touch my daughter any of my kids my adopted kids my biological kids or or just kids that i've taken care of my entire life since I had a fact that when i lived in utah i ran a youth program that had over 60 kids in it of which damn near every single one of those kids has led a productive constructed life one of which is actually now a civil engineer and is an architect and has a business worth millions in salt lake city and he does chalk everything up to the fact that he came to my youth pro program and my project and that the fact that he could express what he wanted to do and not follow in the footsteps of what other people wanted him to do. They wanted him to be a Mormon missionary. He didn't want to do that. I allowed him to explore his creative side so i bought him some strings of spaghetti and he made spaghetti bridges and houses and stuff and whatnot and that's where the spark went off in him and i was happy for him still am still happy for you boy you'll always be my boy you'll always be that little kid sitting there playing with the spaghetti but you know i'm so fucking proud of you mate i'm so proud of every single one of them even those who have chosen to be mum who chose to be stay-at-home mums with kids you know three four five kids you know what good for you you bet you be the best stay-at-home mum you can be okay you raise those kids yeah i'm talking about you sarah sharp who also owns her own body shop and runs it successfully and has local people in the town that, they, that she lived in that i lived in and she hires them she pays them full-time livable wage and still raises has time to raise five kids that's a fucking super mum and i am proud to say that i know her but when it comes to this misunderstanding and that's all it is it's a misunderstanding about biological look i okay when i was younger embarrassment time when i was younger my sister put me in dresses and shoes and whatnot and i used to we used to play pretend that's it play pretend doesn't mean i wear dresses now i mean I'll, i will dress up as dr frankenfurter for halloween if it makes my friends happy and laugh why because that's the sort of person i am does it mean i'm a transvestite deep down no it does not okay it does not am i attracted to trans people no i am not do i hate trans people no i do not do i want them dead no i do not 
I want them to stop the transitioning. I do. Don't get me wrong. Not full stop. Again, hear me out. I want them to wait until they're at least 21 or older. Okay? Now, you can practice living as a man if you're a woman. And you can practice living as a woman if you're a man. Okay? practice keyword get ready for it so that when you are at the right biological age i.e you've gone through puberty your body has said here's your hormones here's your estrogen etc etc that way when you go to transition and then you know x amount of years down the line you've realized that you've made a mistake it wasn't really for you you were manipulated because of tiktok or wherever okay and you want to revert back you actually have a fighting chance of getting the body back that you want when you're transitioning children who haven't gone through puberty where their bodies have not adjusted and you're injecting unnatural chemicals into their system you are going to fuck them up parents who wanted a little girl but got a little boy and transitioned their boy into a girl because that's what their boy want. No, it's what you wanted. It's because you're ashamed that you had a son and you wanted a daughter or that you wanted a daughter and you ended up with a son and vice versa. It doesn't fucking matter. Be grateful that your child was born. As a parent who had a stillborn child, shut the fuck up. Shut up. Be fucking grateful. Be fucking grateful that your child took a breath. That your child is alive. And that your child wants to explore mentally, spiritually, physically. Be fucking grateful. Stop forcing your ideology onto your children. Let them be them. Let them grow and earn their fucking identity. And I'm sorry if you are a fucking parent that says, Oh, my child has no gender. They are a they, them. Go to jail. Rat to jail. Go to jail. Rat to jail. Go to jail. Your child should be removed from your fucking custody. End of. Your child should be removed. Your child should literally go to a loving family that would raise your child correctly, okay? The fact that, again, from birth, you, you are saying no. You are going to be a they, them. You're got no, 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 no. That's, that, that's lunacy. That's insanity. You are immediately, literally erasing that child's existence fucking mentally and spiritually and injecting your own. You are the fucking problem. Not that child, you. You failed as a fucking parent. Not once have I ever said to my daughter, you're joining the cadets, you're joining the army, you're joining the air force, you're joining whatever, you're doing whatever. Not once. My daughter said, Dad, I want to be a model. You know what, my daughter's lucky enough to be, and, and is absolutely pretty enough to be a model, so she did it for a while, loved it, loved it it then she had a bad experience and said i don't want to be a model no more so she stopped she went to university for fashion journalism and she's fucking good at it realized it wasn't for her realized she's going into debt in an area where things where technology is overtaking like e-chat gpt various other things she goes honestly being a journalist is is is, is a dying art so she's chosen not to get herself into deeper debt and me into deeper debt because I'm her parent. I'm actually co-paying for her fucking university. Dick for brains. Nothing's free. And she decided to become a teacher. And she's a damn good teacher. And she loves her job. She lights up when she tells me about her, the day she's had with her children. With her kids. And when she's done several parent teacher evenings and she's sat down with the parents and they said, Oh, your child is doing amazing, but I fear she's struggling here or he's struggling there. She she gives them 
a hundred percent positive constructive criticism i.e she's saying okay your son is failing in potty training i think maybe we should start a journal i.e you write down the time when he's going potty in the house things of that nature da, 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 da. and then come you know when you drop your son off show up bring us the journal we'll fill out our side of it and whatnot that way we can work out a plan to constructive criticism my daughter who i absolutely love and adore don't get me wrong, she has fucked up in her life. She's made mistakes. She's learnt from her mistakes. Okay? She has. She's learnt from her mistakes. But I could not be any more prouder of my daughter. I could not be any more prouder of Cody or Christina, my two other adopted children. I'm proud of them too. Or Thomas. <laughs> Love you, Thomas. Or, or, or Francisco Carlos. I love you, Frankie. Frankie, you little monster. I love you. And Junior, love you too, buddy. Love you, Junior. Love that smile. Don't ever stop smiling, little man. Don't ever stop smiling. But that's my whole point, guys. All right? I'm not... Most of those kids, I'm not their biological father. But, you know, it doesn't matter. I still love them the same. They're still the next generation that is going to set precedence for the generation that follows them. There's a, there's a wise saying, it's not what you leave behind for your children, it's what you leave in them. Okay? So if I was, uh, if I win the, the Euro Millions, okay, knock on wood, if I won the Euro Millions, and I left, me, and I left an, a, a good sum to my daughter, A big part of me knows she would burn through that in a heartbeat, buying shoes, whatever. You know, da, 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 da. Because there are some women out there that are very superficial, and they are, and that is superficial. Do you understand? When you care about the Lambo and my nails and my perm, and it, you're a superficial, shallow fucking cunt, and I don't want to know you. But if you care about insurance life insurance things of that nature uh, setting up you know getting a, a house with a 25 year roof getting a japanese economy shit box and starting and having two to five percent of your base for your taxes that's a position of fuck you and i mean that that's what i would set up for my child that is a, that is what is a successful left in them i would splash out and buy maybe three things just three things I would buy the house I grew up in because I've got good memories of that house. Plus my daughter also grew up in that house as well. That house was six generations, almost seven generations of my family were, were born and raised and grew up in that house. And that house was on 55 Meeting House Lane in Peckham. You can Google Earth it doesn't look like much just a simple little uh, uh i wouldn't even call it a three bedroom house it's a two bit two bedroom and a shoe cupboard <laughs> but but for some reason the council classified it as a, as a as a third bedroom um house where me and my mum my dad my nan my siblings all grew up in my nan turned the back garden into her own personal little wonderland she grew peppers tomatoes um christ uh green beans blackberries you name it my nan god rest her soul i love you nan she learned from a very young age to be self-sufficient chickens oh god you name it why well, because she grew up in the war she knew what it was to sacrifice and she did. And my nan's entire life was nothing but sacrifice. Which is why in my family we respect our elders. We are a matriarchy. So all you bullshit feminists say, Patriarchy! Shut the fuck up. You do not know what the fuck you're talking about because you are in a position of power to say, Patriarchy! Alright? Shut up. Just shut up. You've won. You've gotten everything that the suffragettes wanted. You've gotten everything that second and third, third wave feminism has ever wanted. Shut up. Just shut up. You've won. 
what you're bitching about is stuff in the third world. Fuck off to the third world and bitch about it. And see how fast your head leaves your body. Stop bitching about third world problems from a first world's privilege. Because that's exactly what you do. Stop. Literally, put your own fucking actions where your words are. And then we can talk. Now, that aside. I would buy the house I grew up in. The car I've always wanted. The the only English slash European car I've only ever wanted. Because <laughs> I'm not a fan of I'm not a fan of British cars. I'm not a fan of European cars. Um and no, I'm not gonna say what it is. Um and the third and final thing, I would buy me a bit of land not much 20 acres not here in England fuck no I, I would literally I I would go immediately to the US Embassy lawyers in tow and sort out my paperwork so that I know that when I get on that plane and I land I don't have to worry about INS coming for me or anything I would do it the legal route I would get my US citizenship I would still maintain my British citizenship don't get me wrong I would have dual citizenship and I would buy a bit of land in America somewhere rural like uh, Georgia or um, Texas Arizona New Mexico area you know somewhere around there have my land build the house that I've always wanted uh, again, as you guys may not know, I was always into architecture and structural design as a kid, 10, 11 years old. I designed and built, on paper of course, this beautiful, I mean it's beautiful, this beautiful three-story home. And it was just perfect for me. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Sent it in and I actually won a scholarship. At the age of 11, I won a college scholarship to go to any structural engineering school of my choice in England. Cambridge, Oxford, you name it, at 11. And I said no to it all after, because my dad had just passed away. And I, at the age of 15, yeah, just before my 15th birthday, I got a job, full-time job, working at a pie and mash shop at a restaurant. I'd show up at 4 o'clock in the morning, come home at 2 o'clock in the evening and make pies, mash, jelly deals, um, the, the the parsley sauce, which we call liquor, not booze or anything, but yeah, I would make that from 4 in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, till 2.30, 3 o'clock, help shut up the shop, help clean up the kitchen and prepare it for the next day. And I would probably be leaving the shop at about 4 o'clock. Pay packet in hand in a little brown envelope. That's how old I am. And I would walk home, take half my pay, but immediately put it on the table and say, Nan, put that towards the bills. And then I'd put the rest in my, my HSBC savings account that I got from school. Yeah. And I did that from 15 to 18. Uh, I worked there for two years. While I was working there, I was also doing a landscaping job that I started at six in the evening and didn't get home till nine, sometimes ten o'clock at night. And I would be so tired, I would fall asleep eating my dinner. I'd be like... <clears throat> Guys will tell you how hard that is to fall asleep while there's a meal in front of you. And I worked so hard that my nan demanded, my nan demanded that I quit one of the jobs because it was putting too much strain on my body. The pie and mash shop job was seven days a week, Monday to Sunday. The landscaping job was Wednesdays, sorry, Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays and sometimes work on the weekends. And, um, yeah. But,
when I quit the landscaping job, it was because I had injured myself, I'd hurt myself. And it was affecting my other job working at the pine mash shop. And Graham threatened to fire me, my boss at the time, he threatened to fire me if I, was, if I didn't stop pulling my socks up. And um, then I got into a physical altercation with a co-worker, quit my job there, and um, join the army. <laughs> I, was, I was also still doing the cadets as well, uh, and then I joined the army, and I never looked back. So, this rant kind of went afield. Um, back to the LGBT thing. Um, anyway, uh, uh, there was a post that said, um, men menstruate. No, we don't. As a man, we do not menstruate. Sorry, we do not menstruate. Um, women who have transitioned to men menstruate still. I'll put it into an analogy that, that, that most people can understand. Just because you take a classic car's shell, okay, like it's rolling shell, it's chassis, no engine, no transmission, no, 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 and you put a modern car's drivetrain in that classic car, yeah, doesn't make it a Tesla, doesn't make it a, a, a 2023 Dodge Charger, it's still a 68 Charger, just with a upgraded drivetrain, that's it. They're hybrids, and they're fucking disgusting. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I I cannot stand when people do that. If you buy a Ford Mustang, leave it a Ford Mustang. Leave the Ford motor in it. Leave the fucking gear. But, I mean, don't get me wrong. Upgrade the, the gearbox and the rear end and whatever. That's fine. Upgrades are fine. But when you put an LS motor in it from a Chevy, fuck you. When you put a fucking Hemi in it from a, from a Dodge, fuck you. When... You get the point I'm trying to make. Okay, when you transition from a woman to a man, all you have done is the opposite. You're still a woman, your your drivetrain is still a female. All you've done is made your external look look like a, a man look like a man. You're still fundamentally a woman and vice versa, okay, if you're a guy. Okay? Your drivetrain is still a man. Just because you put a body kit on your car and turned your hot, your your Pontiac Fiaro to make it look like a Ferrari, you're still a fucking Pontiac Fiaro. Okay? Get that through your fucking head. You're still a fucking Pontiac Fiaro. You're not a Ferrari. Okay? You're still a fucking Mazda MX-5. Okay? You're, you're not a fucking... You know, you're not a Chevy Camaro. You're still a fucking Mazda MX-5. That's the point I'm trying to make to you people, okay? And this is why when people say it's not, it, it's a mental health issue, because it is fundamentally, it's up here, okay? It's up here. The amount of people that have transitioned and regretted it is, is, is astronomical, and it's just climbing. The fact that the medical profession, and I'm sorry, those are the fuckers that are to blame, okay? The doctors that write a prescription in the first 5, 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes of meeting someone for hormone replacements and whatnot, you should lose your fucking license. And I mean that. The FDA needs to get involved and start issuing medical malpractice lawsuits. Because not a single fucking doctor, not a single fucking psychiatrist who will follow the actual FDA guidelines, which states that you must be in therapy for six months, not hours, not minutes, not seconds, months minimum before you can be prescribed hormones. And I've got a friend who's transitioning right now. And you know what? Even, even I'm happy for them. Okay, I am. I'm statically happy for them. But I worry that things are moving a little bit too fast for them. Blair White, love you, Blair. You're an absolute. You're, you're you're beautiful, darling. You're beautiful, inside and out. Okay, but even she has said that it was ridiculously how fast 
a California doctor gave her a prescription. And that's my whole point. You want it to stop. You want the madness to stop. You want us to start treating you like proper individuals and not some, not some of the sick mentally ind individuals that you are. Like the fact that 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 there are some individuals that that realize they're going to a male prison because they raped women and said, "Oh, well, I'm just, I'm a woman at heart now, so I'm sorry. You got to put me in a women's prison." Do you understand where the tale fox in the hen house comes from? Scotland's owning that, aren't they? How many female prison how many female prisons have been raped by transgender people now? And you're just learning this? I mean, I get Scotland's not exactly on the up and up when it comes to intelligence. I mean, you did hire a cranky to be your fucking prime minister who got caught being on the take you know but come on i mean dank bro i love you but there's something wrong with your country england's not Eng Eng england's just the same i'm not letting england off the hook and i'm not letting wales off the hook i'm not letting fucking northern or southern ireland off the hook i'm sorry but i'm not long story short I think that you should wait till you're minimally age-wise, you're 21, even though your brain isn't still technically fully deformed, isn't fully formed until you're 25, okay? This is why I think that the, eight, that the minimum age of voting should be increased to 25. This is why I think the minimum age for drinking should be increased to 25. This is why I think the minimum age for things like, I don't know, a driver's license should also be increased to 25. Because these are fundamental things that could actually fucking kill you or another person. Same as owning a firearm. I'm sorry, I, I am 2A, I, I'm I am 100% 2A, I am, I want England to own firearms again, you got to understand that, I do, I want all, all gun restrictions reversed, because people like that stupid idiot, Mizzy, whatever his fucking name is, he fuck around, he'd find out pretty fucking quick how, how hard a 45 hits him in the chest. End of. No more Mizzy. No more taking up the court's time. No more fucking about. Fuck around, find out. End of. But they won't. Because you've got to understand, all governments, every single government across the world, every single government, every every single government has ever have, ever will be, or ever has been, okay, once they've taken power away from you, they have never given it back. Not one. And all you sheeple that think that the government is the end all be all. You have never read a history book in your fucking life. And that scares me. Now this video has been going on for a while man. It's been almost 40 minutes of me just prattling on. So I'm going to finish this coffee real quick. almost done and long story short am i am i transphobic no absolutely not i love trans people there's an old there's a what there's an old the wise old saying good looking from afar but far from good looking okay am i calling trans people ugly no but the principle is still the same there are some cars that are very good looking from afar, but are far from good looking. Same as certain women that are good looking from afar, but far from good looking. Same as certain men, they are good looking from afar, but far from good looking. Okay? All people are good looking from afar, but far from good looking. Okay? So, coffee's done. Which means... Video's done. Ciao. Deuces.